Today in Squad Busters, I've got 39 tips for 39 troops. That's one tip per one troop. Well, that was probably actually kind of obvious. Anyway, starting off, we have Dr. T. And my tip for him is gonna be he's useless in about 90% of the games, but there's 10% where he's pretty useful. So if you're in Angry Vines, I would say Dr. T goes from an F tier troop to a solid A tier troop. That Mega Crab will really protect you in Angry Vines because people don't want to mess with it. It's big, it's scary. It also so if you have a Barbarian King in your squad, that will actually make it so your Mega Crab does more damage, aka attacking faster. And if you use a Rage spell and you're near the Mega Crab, it also affects the Crab as well. So a Barbarian King and a Rage spell or a Super Rage spell will make that Crab attack a lot faster. Next up, we have Royal King. And honestly, kind of the same as Dr. T. You're going to be using it in Angry Vines or if you're freaking out and need to run away from somebody. So if you're ever playing the Modified Tree Giants, I would suggest picking a Greg. First of all, you get a lot of loot from trees very useful but also when you decide to take out tree giants you can take them out a lot faster because well you have that greg next up we have hog rider hog rider probably the second best troop in the game only after colonel ruffs but my tip for him is you know how you can go over grass and then you get two seconds of turbo well if you actually go on vines on the outskirts when they're coming in that actually counts as grass and will give you a turbo boost it's really good it's a lifesaver i've won so many games because of that now similar tip for frank frank kind of a bad troop but the way he works is the more damage you take, the more damage he deals. And if you can take eight consecutive hits in a row, you actually unlock his super slam ability, which stuns enemy units. Now, because you have to take eight consecutive hits in a row, it's impossible to ever get that ability to be used. But if you stand on vines because you take damage, you can just stand on vines for like one or two seconds, immediately get his ability fully charged up or run to somebody and then stun them with Frank. And now in my opinion, don't use Frank. But if you want to, there's my tip. For Miner, a very, very good troop. But I would say you actually only need one Miner. You don't even need to fuse up your Miner. If you want to fuse him up, you can. But one single Miner, make sure you're picking at least one in your squad because that stunning ability that the Miner does is very, very important. Another thing to be aware is just because the Miner goes underground doesn't mean when he goes back over the ground, he's going to stun. He only stuns if he stays under the ground for at least like one to two seconds. So that's another thing I would keep in mind. For the Ice Wizard, one of the best troops in the game if you want to wipe out someone's entire squad in one hit. A thing that I'll do a lot is I'll look for my Ice Wizard in my squad, look at the purple circle above his head. If it's fully charged, go find somebody and then boom, strike him down and watch him lose all their health or maybe even all their troops. My tip for Goblin is going to be only use him at the start of the game. Now he did receive a buff in this recent update. He now drops two more coins. He's a little better. I would suggest using up one Goblin at the start of the game and then no more towards the end of the game. You want that good head start, but you don't want a Goblin at the end of the game because your chest prices are already kind of expensive. So for Optimus Prime, I'm sure we're all aware he's a very tanky unit, doesn't do really much damage, but when the Optimus Prime himself takes damage, it actually heals your entire squad, so he's like a healer. Now, if you're ever playing the lava map and you stand over the coals or the little fire, Optimus Prime will actually outheal the damage that you would usually take. So normally you would bleed a little bit of damage, but instead, if you have an Optimus Prime in your squad, you actually heal. Now, a lot of people think Optimus Prime is much better than Elite One, but I don't really think that's the case. We all know that Elite One makes it so your turbo lasts much longer. And by the way, the tip for that would be a turbo actually lasts 50% longer if you have an Alita 1. So usually a blue turbo boot will take two seconds to run out. But another thing about Alita is when you're holding out down that turbo, she does more damage. So usually she does 170 attack damage, but if you're holding down that turbo, she does over 400 damage. Crazy. And it's actually enough to one tap a blue box. Now my tip for Max is she's a very good turbo unit. She makes you go a lot faster. And that's why I'll actually pick Max over a Barb King or a Colonel Ruffs if I do not already have a Max in my squad. If I already have a Max in my squad, then I'll pick Barbarian Kings or Colonel Ruffs over her. But I guess my tip for Max is make sure you're picking her as your first epic. That turbo is very, very important. Barbarian is actually one of the best starting units in the game. Not by himself, but if you can get two Barbarians, obviously they're elited and you can shred through medium to small size monsters or blue boxes. I'll always pick on my free to play account a Barbarian, then immediately get another one and then start rushing blue boxes in mid. Now the way that an archer works is when she does 12 attacks, she actually has an arrow rain ability. That's that splash damage thing that can wipe out squads. But did you know that if you have more than one archer in your squad, it counts to the ability of both troops. So if you have one archer in your squad, it takes 12 hits to do her ability. But if you have two archers in your squad, it actually only takes six attacks to do the ability for both archers. Now a lot of people think this is actually a bug. It's not a bug, it's part of the game. 
Colt is another good piercing unit. Very good to be using in Loot Goblin Rush. So I guess that's one of my tips. Use him in Loot Goblin Rush. So the way that the Barbarian King works is it'll actually make it so all your short range units attack much faster in your squad if you have a Barbarian King. Now this actually affects a load of different things in the map. So for example, if you have a Hero Greg in your squad from Crystal Forest, Hero Greg will actually take down trees much faster much faster if you have a barbarian king because it affects the hero greg but it also affects dr t's mega crab we went over this at the start if you're near your dr t's mega crab and you have a barb king in your squad that mega crab will attack a lot faster so make sure to remember that abuse it especially in crystal forests same thing with the archer queen she'll make it so your long range units attack much faster now this actually affects a lot of buildings so if you have a turret a cannon or an expo spell they will shoot faster if your queen is nearby them my tip for b is if someone ever throws a shrink spell on you, you do 90% less damage, but the bees circling your squad actually don't have any decreased damage. They still do the maximum amount of damage, meaning you can take someone out literally with the bees and they won't even realize that you're doing the same amount of damage. Now it's time for us to move on to healers. Now it's kind of hard to give specific troop tips for healers. The general rule with healers is if you're playing the lava or spooky world, make sure you're getting a healer before you notice yourself losing health. If you're not in those two worlds don't bother getting a healer unless you're suffering and taking damage so the medic for example he's the worst healer in the game i would only pick him if you're desperate pan though pan is very good for a lot of healing so i would actually fight somebody while in my pam's little station another thing with pam is when that healing station breaks you'll get a big burst of health so i would usually try to time when it breaks run into it get a bunch of health and then i guess go fight someone again poker is the best fighting healer in the game if you actually get one or even two fused pokos you can actually out heal the damage that you take from somebody else. It's kind of crazy how good Poco is. I've been in fights where I tried to take someone's troops out and I just can't take them out because they've got one or two fused Pocos and they just keep healing it up. Now for the battle healer, there's a lot of confusion on how she works. So I'm going to try clear that up a little bit. Now when the battle healer says that she increases squad health by 600 health, that's not every single troop in your squad getting 600 more health. That's actually 600 more health split between all the units in your squad. But that's not really important because what's important is does the battle healer stack? And the answer to that is yes. The more battle healers you have in your squad, the more health you will receive. A very good unit to get. Now Bo is a unit I've been hating for a long time, but I'm kind of getting in a position now where I think Bo might have some potential. For example, at the start of the game, if you want to have a very good start, Bo is pretty good. Loot Goblin Rush, very good as well. Super Ice Spirits, etc, etc. Now, a tip with Bo is if you drop her mines on a breakable bridge, those bridges actually won't break while there's a mine on that bridge. Another thing is I'll sometimes try to time those mines in middle in the final minute to try get gems from the gem mine or in Loot Goblin Rush. Shelly is a very good unit for not back. Not really a tip but it's hard to give a tip for Shelly. I guess the tip would be time her ability. If you're ever using your Mavis, if you're in a big carrot patch, I guess as well, make sure you're in the middle so you get all those Mavis carrots because you don't want to miss them and then take extra time to go get them. Now, which is a unit that isn't really good, but if you're in a game and there's not a lot of splash damage in that game, so people are using kind of tanks, skeletons are very good to counter people who are using tanks. So is that skeleton barrel spell because taking out those little skeletons can take a little while. And then in the meantime, you're doing damage to their squad. Primo actually has his ability instantly charge when you pick him from a chest. This is actually from the recent update. So if you're close to dying, maybe pick a Primo, stun your enemy, and then just kind of run away. So my number one tip for heavy is actually just don't use him. But if you're in the first minute of a game and there's a guy with a hog and maybe a barbarian hunting you down and you know you're not going to survive, pick a heavy. That thing is so tanky. It is a pain to kill and you might just be able to bore them into running away to kill someone else. Nita is a very very OP troop in doppelgangers. When you pick a Nita, you get all those bears, but when you switch out of Nita, the bears still stay. So you can kind of use those to defend yourself from other players. Now, my first tip with chicken is don't pick him if you already have a hog rider in rotation. I think that's a given though, but chicken's actually not a bad starting unit because you get those three turbo boots straight away. You can run to a blue box, hold down turbo, take out that blue box and then rush middle and then take out all those blue boxes before someone else gets to mid. So even though you get turbo from a chicken you can actually get even more turbo because you rush blue boxes so early on for tank make sure you're pairing her up with an archer queen it's like a machine gun <laughs> she attacks so fast if you have a queen in your squad leon while invisible can't break bridges pretty interesting fact right there for the wizard i have two tips first of all if you're ever trying to throw down a spell and then you realize oh wait i don't want to use that spell drag your finger far away across the screen until the spell goes gray once it does that 
let go, boom, you don't use the spell. Also, if you ever want to switch spell slots because you can hold two spells with wizard, tap on the second spell. When you tap on the second spell, it will switch it to the first slot, meaning you can use that spell. Colonel Ruffs is an amazing troop. It's hard to give a tip for him, but if you're ever playing Epic Overload and you already have a bunch of fused units and you get a Colonel Ruffs in your chest, don't pick a Colonel Ruffs. Pick a Burb King or an Arch Queen or any other Epic and then pick Colonel Ruffs so you can fuse up those good Epics because Colonel Ruffs is an amazing Epic, but his main purpose is he fuses up units. So that's what you want to do. You want to get something that isn't a Colonel Ruffs and then fuse it up in Epic Overload. Jessie is one of the best starters in the game. First of all, she can two tap a blue box. Very important to know. Also, if I'm ever using a Jessie, I'll try to control a corner off middle, throw a bunch of turrets down, and you kind of just get a bunch of coins. Also, when you go pick a chest and you already have a turret near that chest, the turret will actually respawn, dropping three coins that you can kind of just pick up. Penny is an amazing troop to get coins and gems, but I'm sure some of you guys didn't know this. You actually get double loot from Penny in the final one minute of a game. Now, this works for a lot of other things in this game, but very important to know, sometimes I'll time my treasure maps for the final minute, get a bunch of gems and coins, and it can be a win condition just like that. For Mortis, I would only pick him in the Spooky and Lava world. Don't pick him in the other worlds, especially the Ice world. Terrible unit to pick, but in the Spooky world, you will probably win a game if you pick him. Now, a trader is amazing for gems, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware he's actually one of the best healers in the entire game. I would say after Poco. Even if I'm playing modifiers like Hatchling Herder or Angry Vines, I'll still pick one Fuse Trader just for the healing, and then also you get some extra gems as well, so pretty important. Dynamite, hard to give a tip for, but I I would say make sure you're picking him in modes like Royal Haunt and anything like Hatchling Herder where you need a lot of splash pick him he will be a game changer pick him over like a tank or anything now lastly we have Bandit and I actually have quite a lot of facts for Bandit first of all we all know you get extra gems from destroying medium to boss size monsters but you can actually get gems from Bandit in other ways as well for example if you ever played the game Royal Haunt ghosts will actually drop extra gems if you have a Bandit Bandit in your squad. So Bandit is the go-to pick in Royal Haunt for me. Also, you can get gems from Jesse's turret, Dr. T's Mega Crab, Nita's Bears, and then Expo spells as well, if you have a Bandit in your squad. Very important to know because sometimes in the final one minute of a game, I will go look for Expo spells or turrets and then just kind of kill them or even a Dr. T's Mega Crab because they drop gems. But no, it does not affect the cannon, unfortunately. Well, I'm hoping you learned some tips from this video that you guys didn't know before. Make sure to use code CLAS in the Squad Busters shop if you ever decide to buy anything and check out my last video on screen right here because it's my last video. If you just tap it, you can watch it. It's my most recent one. So I'll see you guys there. Bye.